basically on chapter eight. Okay, so that'll be the hypothesis test of one sample. And with the one sample, it's, it's easier, right? Because you only one sample. So um, we're basically going to have three parameters that we're going to look at. One will be mu, right? That we might have to do a hypothesis test. This is a parameter. Another one might be, you know, this uh, proportion. That's a parameter. Under the, right? And another one would be this, right? Sample deviation. Got it? Those are the three things which, which we're going to do a hypothesis test on. And uh, that's about it. I mean, we do the histogram to get an idea of the distribution, but this is about it. Now, in chapter nine, we're going to have the same setup. And then we're going to have um, the same parameters that we're going to go over. But we're looking at two samples and basically comparing them. And we will be comparing the uh, mu 1 minus the mean of the second guy. Right? These are proposed. And this is the uh, one, the ratio from one data set. Sorry. This will be minus. Minus the difference between the second data set and this one should be the sigma of the first set. Uh, well, let's see, minus sigma of the second set. So that's, those are the things that we'll be testing. And here we'll be testing basically whether, you know, we're saying mu is equal to some number. We have to say it, right? And that this is going to be we're, th we're theorizing, we're hypothesizing, we're forecasting whether this is some number or not. And sigma also, some number, okay? Now, when we talk about uh, a test statistic, test statistic, we know that when we're talking about mu, and if it's normally distributed, then we calculate a z-test, and that's equal to mu, those are what we, we, what, what do we use instead of mu? Well, from the man-made side, we use x bar. And we want to see how far away this asterisk thing is from that. In other words, that's mu. Mu is the uh, whatever number we think it is. I could put mu here, but keep in mind that we hypothesize this, then you'll be replacing that with this. And that's going to be, right, divided by sigma divided by the square root of n. Or is it sigma? No, it's n. I believe it's sigma divided by n, square root of that. Okay, now, let's go over here. And now, let's supposing we're doing, again, a z-test, but with 2. So, notice how that looks the same. What we'll be taking here is x bar 1 minus x bar 2 of the second column of data, mi minus what we think is the difference between the first average and the second average. So you see this difference between what we hypothesize and what the sample means are is a lot like this, see? There's mu, you see it? Let me get rid of that so it doesn't confuse you. Basically, I'm going to show you that they're the same thing, except now we had to make an addition to add in a second. And we're going to divide that, right? Now, depending on whether or not this quantity is known, whether, I mean, if, if, the, if they give you sigma, fine. If they don't, you have to use S. If you use Z, let me see if I get my... So, when we want to do the sample test for two populations, if, I'll put here, if, mm, sigma 1 and sigma 2, are known, are known, then, or close, or close to each other, somewhat close to each other, then we have to use a pooled variance, a pooled calculation, a pooled, a pooled variance. Why do I call it 
pooled because you're bringing in together both variances of both um, variables. So what they do in this case is they're going to call this um, kind of like P hat, Q hat. Oh, wait a minute. That's for proportion. I don't want that. I'm sorry. I want do that now. Okay, in this case, all right, let me, I got that wrong. So if sigma is known, then use it. If it's not known, if it's not known, then we have to ask the question, if the two means are independent and sigma and, sig and sigma one are unknown and assume not equal, then we use a T distribution. We know what these are. So if, if, if this is known, sigma one and sigma two are, well, you can actually say the square of them because that's the variance. It doesn't really matter. So then what do we do here? We put sigma square one divided by the sample size one plus sigma squared 2 divided by the sample size 2. See? Now remember, this is our test statistic. This is a test statistic. What does a test statistic do? It just shows us where we hit on the line, whether we're in the accept or do not reject or reject. Okay, now we will set that through. Now, same setup with this guy. If I'm talking about um, proportion and the proportion is um, you know and the sample size is bigger or bigger than 30 or NP and NQ is bigger than 5 then we can use an, again a z-test and this time uh, we're going to do instead of this x bar we to put what p hat minus what we think the true population is divided by the deviation remember in this case, it's going to be n, oops, sorry, not n, it's going to be uh, uh, now we're talking about um, the t, yeah, so that, okay. So on the z, um, okay, so there are two types here. So when we're talking about proportion, I guess they're using a t-test, which is a lot like the z-test. Okay. And that's p hat. Oh, I'm on the wrong page. Yeah, that's going to be p hat minus p over um, probability of success times the probability of failure divided by um, n square root. Okay, now you could also do this as a, a z if, you know, if n is quite large, or let's say greater than 30, then we can do a z. If it's smaller, we can use a t. Okay, how about this guy? 2. So guess what? If we want to do like a t test statistic for two samples, then we can see it's going to be a lot like this, you see? This we calculated from the man side. So this is going to be p hat 1 minus p hat 2. That difference compared to what we theorize, right, we're going to compare that, that's a minus 2. Instead of mu, we're going to be comparing the ratios of what we theorize, what God's truth is, right? And that's going to be divided by 2 test, okay? Now, on this guy here, it's a little tricky only to the sense that... Um, if, if this is a case of independence, so this is a case when we have both uh, samples, the samples are independent. Well, that's okay. So if they're independent, then down here, what do we have? The same thing as we did before. It looks a lot like, like this, but this is if sigma is known. If it's not known, then we go over here and guess what we use instead, right? That comes from our calculation. And that'll be N1 sample size and one N2, okay? Now, in order to do the T distribution, you need a degree of freedom. Now, the degree of freedom on the case where the samples are independent will be the smallest uh, N1 minus one or N2 minus one. Whichever is smaller, that's what you go use as your degree of freedom. Only in the case where there is sample independent. Okay, supposing that, 
Okay, that's that's good enough. So, all right, and then we're going to talk about sigma. Okay, now that's going to have a test too. So for we need a test statistic for sigma, right? And the test sigma test for this is called the chi the chi test. I'll put test here, and that will be equal to n minus one, right? Times what we calculate from the data is our sample variance divided by what we hypothesize sigma to be. Now, how about this when we're comparing two sigmas? Okay, now if we compare two sigmas, you guys will have these, uh, these equations too. So, when I'm comparing two sigmas, uh, t-test, okay, so, hmm, I'm back. Okay, so when you're touching this guy here, when you're touching the difference of two, they're going to have a, um, they're going to have this as your test statistic. It's called an F, okay, and so then we have, um, we'll be testing S1 squared over S2 squared. This is our test statistic. Sample deviation of two populations where S1, we have to have it set up so that S1 squared is larger than or equal to S2 squared. Okay, so we haven't done this yet, F tests, but that's because we have more than one. We probably won't do it. Okay, so that's that. And um, now, I've calculated test statistics, or these are equations for test statistics. You still have to decide whether you're going to set up the null hypothesis of one or two uh, samples, in which case they all are going to work. Once you have a test statistic, depending on what distribution it is, you're going to have this Z test. Or you could have a t-test, right? Or you could have a chi-test. These are all test statistics. Once you determine alpha, that's the level of significance of a test. Then when you have alpha, you divide it two if it's a two-tailed test. And the way you decide if the two-tailed test is the way you construct your alternative, your alternate hypothesis test. And I mean hypothesis, your alternate. So, if I tell you that there's 0 0.05 in here and 0 0.05 over here, right? Remember, alpha is equal to 1 minus the confidence interval. The confidence interval is, is, is twice one of those, so it would be equal to, uh, right? Uh, one of these would be, let's say, well, I have 0 0.05 and 0 0.05, right? So, I know that alpha divided by 2 is 0 0.05. In other words, alpha is equal to 0.1. Okay, I just multiply both sides by 2. But the point is, you have to take, if it's a two-tailed, if you have an alternative such that it's saying, in the case of one sample, the alternative is saying that, that if we're talking about mu, okay, so we say that equals some kind of number, right? And then the, alter oh, sorry, the alternative is that it either does not equal to it, which means two tail, or if it's this way, it's an arrow to the right, just one tail. If it's this way, it's one tail this way. And the original null hypothesis is that, you know, mu, we make a claim that it's this, it's not the same number. And this is, isn't the same number. That's what determines where that. Okay, now, this area is determined by the significance level. That's alpha. In the case of two tail, you have to divide it by two, right? Now, you have to figure out what these critical values are. Critical values, those critical values are the area of alpha. See? This area in here, every in here, have a point on the z-axis that you have to calculate. That you use the book to come up with this. Plus and minus. And if the test score hits there, this is in accept, if you want. We don't say accept because it's misleading. 
We say do not reject. Do not reject what? Do not reject the null hypothesis. Do not reject. We don't have, we don't have sufficient evidence to say that. Well, okay, now the p-value is this. Let's use green. Once you got your z-test, if you'll drop a line and find your area from here on back, that's your p-value. So the green part is p-value. That's the area from here back. But the alpha value, or this being here, is, is the alpha value is from red on back. So in this case, you can see that this area is bigger than that area. But you didn't even have to do the p-value now, because we already know the test statistics hitting on this side of the critical value. Any questions? A little too easy? Then let's go here, and let's go here, let's go here, and then we'll go here. Dean will go to here. I'm eight three. Okay. I guess we're there. Let's make this bigger. All right. Um, so let's go down here. Okay, so let's say most adults would erase their personal information online if they could. Uh, and this survey of 565 selected adults showed that 59% of them would erase all of them if they could. So let's take a look at that. Uh, so most would erase. So the software, the sample size is 484, right? And this is a... What, what, are we saying a mean or a proportion here? What are we tasting? Proportion. Yeah, proportion. So, um, so we know that uh, this thing we're going to have, we're going to be testing a proportion, yeah? And then the, the null is always equal, right? And so what we're doing is that uh, it shows that 57% of them would erase all their personal. So, and uh, so when we're talking about, um, let's say, more than 50 or less than 50%. So this is what they came from, from the data, right? 57%? It's not, it's not our hypothesis. So maybe if we had a proportion that says um, that that's like uh, 0.5, like 50%. Okay, and then um, let the re parameter represent the adults that it would erase their, I'm assuming 50% or less than 50% when we're talking about um, whether it's significant. Let's see what this, I don't know what the answer is. It says at least one, okay. Let me see if they, uh, what did they put here? Are they putting the alternative or express the original claim? They say that, are they talking about the alternative? Do I want to show that there's more than 50% or less than 50? Uh, I would say my claim is that uh, more, right? Uh, that, yeah, my claim is that more. Let's see. See if they're doing the alternative here. Come on. Okay. So what they got here is this. I'm using 50% because... I can't use this number, right? That's from our statistics. This is our hypothesized. Okay, so now the null should be, and we're talking about that, right? And that one's supposed to be always equal, yeah? And that one's going to be what I had before. Okay, and then this one would be, if I want to show again that, um, you know, they, they're saying it's greater, so I might, okay, so then I'm going to use row, right? And I put greater. Is that what I had before? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Now, let's take a look at that problem. It's a classic problem. Why did I use 50%? Because either more than 50% or less than 50%. That would be the theory. That would be what our theoretical idea. It's a little tricky, but the actual calculation is 0.57. So if we're actually going to calculate a test statistic, we'll use this subtracted from 0.5. Um, okay, any questions here? Okay. You can do that on a final. Uh, all right, let's try this one. Um, okay, so here we go. Same idea that we have a mean pulse rate um, this is the average, right? Is this is what um, is this is what's hypothesized that you should have 68.6 beats per minute, 
from a random sample of 154 adult males, the mean, and this is what we came out with, 68. So, uh, so I'm not sure what the, the original claim, we're going to talk about mu, right? And so uh, we're, we're saying that um, the mean pulse, uh-huh, I see, express, okay, it says, it says complete parts A and B. So uh, what are we trying to show here that uh, this, this was more, uh, no, it's less than this, right? So uh, are we trying to show that the pulse rate is lower or higher? Then, I mean, what are we trying to show? It says the pulse rate is lower. What do you want to do? More than 68.6. Um, uh, that's the hypothetical. Oops. 68.6. And what came out of our statistics was more than 68. Yeah, but what is mu here? This is, this is the mean pulse rate of our adults. It's 68.6, right? But that, doesn't, that didn't come from our sample. That is our claim. This is our claim. But the sample, right? Oh. Is that right? Unless I got it backwards. Anyway, this pulse rate is 68. That's what I think. Let's see. Maybe I'm wrong. Yeah, at least one of your answers. What do I got it backwards? Hmm. Confusing. Okay, how do I go back? I want to just delete equal sign. Oh, yeah. Good. I was blind. So you're saying it's 68? It looks to me like they want the original. This is confusing. Because we're saying that equals the 68, and that's going to be 6, right? Isn't that what I had last time? But I had greater than, didn't I? Yeah, it's weird because this is the original claim. The other one that we just did, I thought was the other way around. So what's the null hypothesis? Well, that equals, yeah? True? The null is always equal. And here I'm going to put 60 now. The other one was, was again, testing about mu, yeah? But we were saying, we think that, uh, do we want to show it's just different? Then 68.6, or do we want to say it's more or less? If we want to show it's just different, then it's a two-tail. And again, we'll have what? The 68.6. Okay. Yeah. Because I just want to know if it's 68 per 6 or not. Not if it's less or bigger, just if it's not. See if we can understand this thing. This. Okay. Uh, that's done. Okay. Um, so now we're talking about standard deviation. Remember the parameters mu, proportion, and sigma. Okay, so I asked her if they want equal or less than. So now we're talking about sigma, right? And then, um, so it's a uh, standard deviation pulse of less than 10 for a uh, random sample of 149, uh, the standard deviation. So that's the sample from our data. And this would be our hypothesized. So I don't know if they're, this time they're looking for, they want a test that uh, is less than 10. So if we go less than, let's say 10, I'm not sure, I'm still clarifying that in my mind here. So sigma is less than 10. Now, it's just the way they worded it. The original claim here is that they said the claim. OK, so we're OK. OK, so now we already know this answer here, right? It's the same as this. OK. Uh, OK, and then this one is going to be always equal. Okay, cool. So that shows you, you'll get these problems on, on the final for sure, because it's just a real simple setup of how to set up this null hypothesis. Okay. Any questions? It's too easy, huh? Okay, so um, now, 
do I go back here? Okay, now. Um, we just did that. Did we? Uh, erase, yeah. Erase the most personal. Okay. Okay, now. Uh, but these are exercises, but exercise on online data. Let's see, stats here. Cell phone, I don't know if this is the P values. Okay, so the claim. Most adults, oh. Uh, okay, that's okay. Uh, we'll erase some, all of their personal data, software. So that's it. Look at that amount. 99.4%. You could bet that that's, you know, if, if you're thinking 50% more or less, 99% is way over of them, uh, would erase the person. If they could make a subjective estimate and decide whether the results are significantly low or significantly high. So uh, the results are, are, say, well, if you take a look at the 99.5%, that's that's pretty significant in it, away from 50%. So there is, um, there is evidence to support the claim that most adults would erase it. There is, right? Because, okay, let's see. Good. Any questions, ask, because it's on your final. So is the question, what is statistics? And so is a question about your statistic on your sample size are used to forecast or hypothesize on your parameters. That picture, remember? Okay, that's not too bad, is it? That's, uh, let's see if we can do one more. And uh, probably the same thing. Okay, so we're going to make a decision about the claim. And we're going to use what's called the rare event rule. So if it's a really rare event, we're probably going to think of it as not likely. <laughs> I think that's basically what it is. Make a subjective estimate, determine whether the events are, are likely. For example, the claim that a coin favors the head sample uh, consists of 11 heads out of 20. Okay, that's not a rare event. That doesn't really tell us that the coin's unfair. It's too close to, you know, because you could expect that in, you know, I mean, I don't think it's that far off. And uh, to support the claim that the coin favors heads or tails, right? Well, this doesn't support that claim, does it? Do you see why? It doesn't support the claim because, because this is nearly 50%. So uh, here we go. The claim of the pulse rate of students in a large math class is 60 so um, that's the claim, right? And um, the students have a mean sample pumps rate of 60.5. So this is the, the data, right? This man-made, and and this is what the, what, what will we th hypothesize? It's the bank. So um, if you look at them, uh, the difference between 60 and 60.5, right, is not that big a difference, is it? So um, it's pretty close. So uh, the sample, I would say, is not unusual if the claim is true. If this claim is true, this is not far away. Do you understand? Therefore, there is sufficient evidence to support the claim. Okay, so let's say D. Any questions? Uh, the sample is not unusual. How many non unusuals do we have? Let's see. The sample is not unusual if the claim is false. So I knew that this was not far away from there. So I know that the sample is not an unusual. It's not a rare event. It's not unusual if the claim is false. The claim is that it's this. So if that claim is the pulse rate is, you know, is greater than 60, therefore there is not sufficient to, to support the claim. And you got it? It's kind of tricky, but OK. Let's go back. All right. Uh, let's, see. let's see what we got here. These are just some more exercises. 
Um, that was the pulse rate. Okay, let's go to the test statistics or whatever they're asking here. Okay, 17. So, uh, all right, so they're giving you the test statistic already. It's 1.91 when testing a uh, claim that the proportion is greater than 0.8. Identify the hypothesis being a two tail, left tail. Well, look at the claim as one direction to the right. So uh, this is a, would you agree to a right tail? Okay, then the p value. Now, we have a test statistic, okay? So let's see if it'll let me do this. So if I have a normal, and it says normally, they're giving us a normal distribution. So what is the test statistic? This is zero, right? So this test statistic is hitting about here, 1.19. Yes? And let me get rid of this here. Okay. So now here again, so that you learn, from the test statistic over, the area under the curve is the p-value. So what I have to do is look for, you know, this area. This is 1.19, yes? So now I am do the reverse. I'm going to go from the margin to the guts. When you have probability, the probability number goes from the guts to the margin. That gives you the z. So uh, let's see. So we're filling up the curve from here to here, right? So if we go to here, okay. So um, so now we have the positive z scores, okay? So do you remember what it is that's uh, that was in the guts? Yeah. Let's see here. It was 1.19 is the margin. So now I'm not looking at the guts. That is a z value. So I'm looking for 1.1, 1. 1, and then I'm looking for 9. I see that represents 72 point, that represents point, oh, I can't do it there. Yeah, but that's the area from the right back. Okay, so I'm going to have to take, so remember this area from here on back, yeah, I think it's right. So to find this area, it's 1 minus 0.7224. Right? That's 224. So you got like a thousand, uh, 10,000, and you're subtracting 7,224. Let's see. No, yeah, that's kind of the same thing. I'll just. Oh, you got it? Okay, so that would be the p value. Okay, so. That's going to be point two seven seven six. Okay. Now, if that's the case, okay. Um, then <laughs> we had a p value of uh, when I looked at the table, the the z value they gave us was what one point one. I don't know which one's nine. Oh, that's it right here. 1.1. 1. 1. It's 0.88, isn't it? Oh, 1.1. 1. 1. 1. <laughs> I guess it's easy to go. I don't know if I can read. No. Oh, yeah. So, 0.08. Well, no, I don't know if that's right because uh, I still don't know if I have it lined up. 1. Point, what was it again? 1.19. 1. 1.1. 1. 1. Okay, so it's, it's the green bar. And I think this is eight, so I think we got one more. 1.830, yeah. 1 1.8, 1.830, yeah. So I was wrong, it's 1.8830, 1 1.8830. Well, that's easy to subtract, right? Because 70 will take you to 190, so like point 017, is that what you got? 8830. Eight, eight, okay. Oh, I have to add a 1. Yeah, 0.117. So, 0 0.117. 0 0.117.
point one one uh, one one seven. Yes. So do I have to round up? Look at this p value. Compare it to this point zero five significance in that we had it all on uh, the right side, right? What's the bigger number? Is alpha, oops, is alpha, you know, is it greater or less than? Well, we have 0.117, right? So I would say alpha is less than the p-value, right? Alpha is less, or you can say the p-value, the p-value is greater than alpha. So if alpha is here, the area is from here to here, but the area is from, so are we in the do not reject or reject? So let me do it so that you can see it a little bit better. So if I do a distribution like this, yes, and I have an alpha, right, that I'm saying alpha is equal to uh, point under the curve, 0.117. That's alpha. Do you see it? Okay, now this guy, now when I look at my test statistic, or is that what it is? That my p-value. Now, now I look at my alpha, that's my, now my test statistic. The test statistic is what? It's hitting somewhere right here. You see it? The test? That one is 1.19. Is that right? And this one was what? What was that critical value? Uh, 1.117, we got that because we were, where? Remember, um, okay, we found the p-value, that was easy enough. But what was the test statistic? Oh, that is a test statistic, sorry. So yeah. The 0.8? So this is the 1.19, that is a test statistic, yes? Okay. But the alpha is 0.117. So the test statistic's hitting right here, <laughs> and it's 1.19. See it? 1.19? 1.19, that's the test statistic. Now, that, that, this is not alpha. This is the p-value. <laughs> it's kind of messy. 0.117 is the p-value. Okay, now, we have to go to an alpha of 0 0.05. Okay, so is 0 0.05 larger or smaller than 0 0.111? Smaller. So that means that when we have our, so the alpha is smaller, so it has to be this way back, because this area is smaller than that area, and that is in the we 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 reject this, but it's like we're accepting that. So uh, we're in the reject region, right? So we fail to reject. So we know it's one of these two. And there is sufficient evidence to support that it's greater than. Because this, uh, OK, so, what, uh, so, so did, we did we fail to reject no? No, this is actually rejecting the null, isn't it? Be careful. Well, this is accept, if you will, and this is reject. Accept can be re spoken as fail to reject. So we are in the accept, which is we fail to reject, well we're in the reject, period. So there is not sufficient support that this is point, no that's not the case because we're rejecting the null hypothesis. And what is a null hypothesis? Okay, so we're going to have the null hypothesis, um, well they don't, we don't even know what the null hypothesis is, but we know that this is in the reject of the null hypothesis. And what is it that we're supposed to do? Right tail. So we're going to reject it. There's not sufficient evidence to support this thing. Or oh, actually, there is. Do you see what's happening? Because we're over here. We reject and accept, or any way you want. But this is accepting the alternative. So um, we reject that. There is sufficient to support. I think that's right. Well, we're definitely in reject, right? Okay, alpha is 0 0.05. And the other one was 0.11, right? 7? 
Yeah. Okay, let's see if I got this right. So the p-value, did we, the p-value is correct, right? Yes. Okay. So now, let me say, so my p-value is point, and is it one tail test or two? One tail. One tail to the right. Again, if we uh, take a look at this, and I want to look at this area, and this is my alpha area, I mean my, my p-value. So the area in here was point, was it 117? I want my p-value area. So this area here, the p-value, 0.117, and the alpha, oh, 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 so my p-value is bigger. What the heck's wrong with me? P-value is bigger, isn't it? So that's in the accept. That's in do not reject. Well, I just have to look at which area is bigger, the red or the green. I mean, I just have to say, I'm only comparing these two. So if P is bigger, that means it has more area than this area, which means it's in the do not reject. So we're back here to, oh, fail to reject. There's not sufficient uh, data to support. So because we failed to reject, we're actually accepting the alternative. It's confusing a little bit, but I don't know. But you, you yeah. Right. See, for some reason, I, I don't know how, why I did it, but I, I, I thought that... Anyway, there isn't any doubt that the p-value is greater than this. Anytime the p-value is greater than the alpha, you're in this range, which is the do not reject. All right. Here we got again. Now we have a test statistic, so let's draw it out again. Uh, this time we have this curve. It always helps to draw it. And we have a test statistic. We know it's a z, I mean normal. Oh, and it's 2.14. So, this is a test statistic, my Z test. Okay, and that Z test statistic is 2.14. Right? And that, I, in order to find my P value, I have to find the area here on back. The Z statistic determines the p-value. So now I'm over here, so I'm going to go here again. Oops. And I'm going to look at 2.1, right? 2.14. So uh, 2.14. So I'm. Oh, I don't know if it goes that far. I might have got the wrong one. Huh? Let me see. No. 2.14. One for what? 2.14, 14, 2.14. So right here, okay, right here. 2.14, Yeah. 0 0.9938. Right here, okay? But that's the area from here to here. It's not what I want. I want this area. But I know the total area is one, right? Let me see right. So what is one minus that amount? It's pretty small because that's almost uh, 900. So it's 162. Is it, is it point? But well, that's, that's in here, right? So the area in here is? 0 0.0062, which is my p-value. Okay. Now, is this okay? So let me put um, done from there. Well, I can't do that. Okay. So, okay, so now we have this is, okay, now, look, we want to taste the claim that it does not equal. So it's a two-tail, yes? When you're testing the claim of not equal, it's a two-tail test. Okay, now the p-value, we already calculated it. What was it? It was point zero zero six point zero zero. Point zero zero. Why does it do that? Okay. 
But we want to round to how many? Three places. So right like that. Okay. Uh, well, oh yeah, you're right. Well, wait, no, we have to divide alpha by two. But this is not alpha. This is the test statistic. Oh yeah, but we have to compare it to alpha. So alpha is what? In, in, in this case, what is alpha in that? If it's a two-tail. Uh, well, wait a minute. This, this is the test statistic. It has nothing to do with the critical value, right? Okay. So uh, I'm looking at this, and I'm comparing this. Well, this was my area. It was 0 0.0062, right? So if I had, uh, that's my test statistic, so there's only one way to go. It's positive, right? 2.14. And even if you use 0 0.10, the whole amount, well, okay, the p-value, we came up with 0 0.0006. It was 0 0.99, 0 0.9938. See, when it's below five, can we drop it to round it off? Should that be 0.005? No, it's over five. It's when you round up. And oh, and when you don't, you just don't round down. Hmm. Should we look again? I don't know. And it was 2.14. I thought we had it. So here's 2.14. One four right here. No, two point one four right here. Yeah. And two point one four? Four. So it was one thousand. Yeah, so it's like um if I call that a thousand, and I subtracted nine hundred. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I can't see it, huh? No, I. It's too small. So that's only one hundred and sixty-two point zero six two. Point zero one six. Point zero one six. Is that rounded? So it's point zero one six. Point zero one six. Uh, what is it? Okay. Uh, point zero. Okay. Now. <sighs> yeah. Okay. So. Um, Let's try that again. Let's divide that by, uh, what was the uh, alpha? Is 10? And, uh, I mean, well, we don't know, right? We don't know. We just know the Z test. But we're, com but where did it get to 0 0.032? Unless you did it wrong. Let's see, what was it? Let me see. You couldn't have done it wrong again. <laughs> so that's two, right? And that's seven. And that's four. Is that right? And that's one. I know that's ten. Oh, that's not ten. That's not seven. That's nine. Nine. And that's six. Yeah, you're right. Point zero one six two. What the heck? Try it again. P value. That's the same problem. Oh, except for 2.19. Let's see what happens. Uh, okay, so to determine the alternative, I'll note that the claim is to be tested is it's not. So symbolically, that means that the null hypothesis is 
is that is that the proportion is equal to 0.474. And the alternative is going to be that it doesn't. Now identify the null alternative and the thing. So we know that it's going to look like, like this, right? Where this is a two-tailed test. And this is point, uh, point zero 0.0714. We got that from here. Uh -huh. That's a claim. That's our hypothesized value. It's not from our data. Okay, so we're going to be using this one, right, for two-tailed test. Come on. Did it do anything? Okay. Press continue. Let me see. There we go. Uh, I think. Okay. Um, Oh, oh, twice the area to the right. P-value is equal to twice the area to the right. Oh, okay. So what was our area? Was 0.177? Okay, so now we want to double it. Oh, so that is 0 0.032. Okay. So keep that in mind. I had forgotten. So when it's a two-tail... You have to double up your, which is what you said, right? I have to double up this uh, p-value of one side. Okay, that makes me feel better. Close. Okay, so uh, that was point C32. Okay, so now, now I'm asking, is the p-value bigger or smaller than the alpha value? So the p-value is right here. We calculate it now at 0 0.032. Now, is that bigger or smaller than 0 0.10? I guess. Well, even if I compare it like half of that, which would be 0 0.05, yes? Half of this, right? Now, even if I use the whole amount, 0.1, you see, either one of these, right? Any of one of these alpha guys, right, they are bigger than 0 0.032, do you agree? 0 0.05 is bigger than 0 0.03. 0 0.1 is bigger. In every regards, alpha is larger, right? So when I have the bottom part of this, and this is my test, this is my alpha in here, which was, we oh, just got through saying the whole alpha thing is 0 0.032. Yeah. And alpha, so this is, this is my test statistic, but alpha is smaller than this area. It's back here somewhere, right? It's either 0 0.05. So alpha is over here in the guts. Yeah. So when the p-value is bigger than alpha, you're on the accept or do not reject, right? Because p-value test statistic is to the left of the alpha. So it is in the do not reject. Yes or no? So if we do not, do you agree? Oh, here's my test statistic, right? Z test. The area from here on back is going to be this 0, 3, 2, which is everything I got colored. Okay, now my level of significance is less than that, so the area is smaller. So this means the test statistic is hitting to the left of the critical value. So this is do not reject. So let's do that, not reject. So if I do not reject, so I got here, fail to reject, there is sufficient evidence to support the claim of 0.40. Or fail to, there is not sufficient of support. Well, you are failing to reject, right? Or if you want to think about it, you are accepting, right, that, that what? That they're equal to 0.40.
Okay, here's the, remember our, our null was that a row is equal to 0 0.408 or the alternative, I say row, but I mean that's the same as pr pr proportion, is not equal to 0 0.408, okay? We failed to reject this, which means we accept, if you want to help you, we accept this, which means we don't find sufficient evidence to accept this. Because I'm saying fail to reject, it's kind of hard to think about it. But if you want, in your mind, you either accept or reject. But they don't like to use the word accept because that means it's a fact. It's not a fact, it's just the probability is that this is the case. So we say that, that the proportion, if we fail to reject this, we're certainly not accepting this. So we fail, and there is not sufficient evidence to support. Oops. And there's not evidence to support that the claim is, wait, are they the same? There is not sufficient evidence to support the claim. Oh, that's reject. OK, fail to reject, and there is sufficient to, no. You see? OK, that better be right. Oh, God. It says p-value is less than alpha. What? Oh, if the p, yeah, yeah. If we fail to that, this information is determined whether we reject or fail, then state the final conclusion. What else is left? There is sufficient, oh, uh, to support the claim that, I don't see it. There is sufficient support to claim that the row is not. The claim that 0 .4, 0 0.48. <sighs> hmm. All of them wrong. What the heck? Why? Isn't 0 0.032 a lot bigger than... No, this is 0.1. <laughs> I put 0 0.01, I think. Didn't I? Okay, now let's go again. Which one's bigger? <laughs> How hard can it be? Let's see. Uh, how hard can it be? So I know what, I already know my p-value, and I'm simply asking if it's bigger or smaller than my alpha. What's bigger, alpha or, or p-value? Alpha. Yeah, so I don't know what I'm doing in my head. So I'm saying that alpha is greater than the p-value. OK? What does that mean graphically? That means alpha, which is the red, all the way area under the curve, which is 0 0.10, is bigger than the p-value, which is, uh, we're going to do that in green, right? This one's somewhere down here, where the area in that curve is 0 0.032, right? And the area in the red curve from here on back was my p-value, which is, uh, no, that was my level of significance. So it's either 0 0.05 or 0 0.1. But both of those, are, I don't know what I'm doing. So, so anyhow, this one's a lot bigger. I don't know. So what's bigger, the alpha or the, uh, see the alpha is 0 0.032? That's the p-value. OK. I got all confused now. The p-value is from here over right. So this should be green here, huh? That's my p-value. See it? And now this, the red, is going to be somewhere like, it's bigger. So it's going to be over here. And that's going to be, yeah? So now we have the, the p-value. We have uh, alpha is bigger than the p-value. <laughs> How can you make it any more confusing? Okay, so guess what? We're in the rejection side. So we have a 50-50 chance uh, Not really. It's just you got to pick to be able to compare which is bigger than what. And somehow, I, I don't know what I did in my brain, but the alpha is bigger. This number here is bigger than that number. I don't know what I did last time, but this is, is it? It's 0 0.032. Oh, that's bigger, isn't it? Yeah, red's bigger. 
But red is alpha. <laughs> I got my colors messed up, so there's a go. There we go. So if alpha is bigger than the than the than this uh, p value, right? Then that means the test statistic is hitting over here on the reject side. So we're going to we're going to reject and there is sufficient evidence to claim that the okay, I believe that. We reject the null because we have the p value is less than alpha. Okay, keep that in mind. So in essence, we're accepting the alternative, aren't we? Which is what? So the answer is reject and support. So it's good to do these because if you don't do them, you don't get to practice. Okay. How are we doing? Time wise. One more. I know you like these. Oops. Okay. Okay, let's see, did we do 19? Yeah. Okay, so let's see if we can do one quick one, and then, uh, so I don't need this one at all. Okay, um, so we did this one, 18? Yeah. So let's see. Uh, okay, here's one that might be, you know, fun to do until we get this right. Exercise 2.2, 222. Okay, let's try it again. Here. All right, let's get this one first time. <laughs> what is Z? That's my test statistic. So let's draw it out. Yeah, negative 1.82. Okay, draw a line like this. That is your, your test, your Z test. Okay, so you say, okay. Okay, now, in order to find my p-value, I have to find the area from here on back. And the p-values, I've been using green, right? I mean before. Okay. So now I have to go to the table. And let's see. I'll go to the table. All right. So now I'm going to go here. And now I'm going to go over here. And I have a z-value of uh, minus 1.82. Minus 1.8. So I think it's right here. I think it's zero, one, two. So what is, uh, but that is it. Because I'm going from the left to right. So what is that? Zero, when you say zero point? Three, four, four. Zero point three, four, four. Uh, let's see, where am I at now? Zero, oh, I'm, am I done with this? Zero point three, four, okay. Okay. Okay, so point, uh, what was it, zero, three, four? Three, four, four. Point, point, point is it zero? Three, four, four? Oh, yeah, it's usually four digits. Let me go back. I don't know, what do they want here? Critical value? Oh, round to two. Round to two? Yeah. Oh, uh, wait, okay, wait a minute. I, the critical value of Z are, okay, so now, this is not right. I, they're asking for the critical value. So that's a little different. Uh, okay, so what I mean to say is that this, okay, this is a critical value, right? So critical values are intimately related not to the test statistic, but to the alpha. So, uh, what are we testing? Test statistic here and use the significant alpha and then should we reject or right? So what the claim is le less than, yeah? So that means a one tail test to the left, yes? Oh, there it is. And there's that, right? But that's my test statistic. That's not my level of significance. Over here, I need to have, uh, by the way, how much area was in there? For alpha? Did we ever calculate it? No, no, that, that's for the alpha level. So, I mean, what was the p value? Did we ever calculate it? The p value was uh, 0 0.0344. 0 0.0344. That's what's in here in the area. Okay, now red. 
on my alpha level is all 0 0.10 in the tail. Right? So is point this is point one zero. Is that bigger than point zero three? So alpha must be over here somewhere. Do you see? Because that is alpha is point one zero. In this case, alpha is larger than the p-value. Yes or no? Yes. So are we in the we are in the do not reject or the accept area? Do you see that? We're in the do not reject. Yeah. But in your brain, if you want to think accept, I don't know. So anyway, here I got to put in not. I, oops. I'm not going to put in. Okay, this is point one, right? So I have to find the z critical value. So I have to go back to my table, right? And now I'm going to go, I'm going to look up, now I'm going to look up that much area in the curve. So now I go over here, oops. So now I go over here, and now uh, what I'm looking for is point zero 0.01. But this time I'm in the guts. Okay, so now I have point zero one point uh, point two here how about right here okay that's almost point zero zero point point zero one okay, that's point zero zero nine point zero zero nine nine so that's minus two point three zero one two three Minus 2.33. Okay. That's more like it. Minus 2. Oops, God, why does it do that? Okay, now what's that equal to? Well, that's about right. Is it how many decimal points? I think it said 2. Okay. So we should be okay finally. I hypothesis test the critical from the value of the test statistics and do not lead to reach. It's a one tail test. Mm -hmm. So we put all of this on one tail. Oh, really? I'm always, I always have trouble with those. Well, in the <laughs> test, on the final, I'll look to see if, if it's yeah. close. Mm, it's a one tail test to the left. I thought we did it correctly. Did you do 0 .01 or 0 .01? Uh, What is it? It's 0 .01. Oh. So now I have to go to point 0.1, not point zero 0.01, right? So I have to go to uh, point 0.9. It's going down, point 0.968. It's point 0.1. So zero 0.01, yeah. So um, here, maybe? That's about, that's 3, 10. That's 10. 100, 1,000, 10 thousandths. That's pretty close. It's three ten thousandths from what we want. Do you see it? We're looking for point 0.1. Right. That's point zero zero three. Right. That's three ten thousandths away. That's pretty close. I mean, from for military work. So what does that represent right here? Right. So then I got zero one two three four five six seven eight. That should be eight. And then what's that the other? Yeah. Negative, negative 1.28. Negative 1.28. Negative 1.28. Negative 1.28. Negative. 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 1.28. Oh, let's see, did I, am I, I don't need to, it's two decimal places, right? How did I get one? Good, dang. Okay, now, now, what happened? Do you remember if our alpha was bigger or smaller? The, this alpha was bigger than, uh, okay, do you remember our p-value? Yes. Okay, hold on. Okay, what is our p-value? 0 0.0344. Okay, and then our alpha? Is 0 0.1. 0 0.1. 0 0.1. 0 0.1. 0 0.1. 0 0.1. 0 0.1. 0 0.1. 0 0.1. 0 0.1. 0 0.1. 0 0.1. 0 0.1. 0 0.1. 0 
This thing is a lot bigger than that. Yes. Is this, uh, and so we're right here, right? So my alpha, which is red, is much bigger than my p-value area. Okay? So that is in the do not reject. Okay. We're getting there. So do not reject or do not reject. So if you're not rejecting, it's in your mind, I'm thinking you're accepting the null. So it's failed to reject. So yes, so you have reject the null, right? But there is not sufficient claim to do the alternative, right? Because you're really accepting this. In your brain, think accept, which means this is reject. So this is reject the null, yes, and there is not sufficient to support the alternative that it's less than. Make sense or not? So come on. <laughs> oh my god, I thought I had a fun. Uh, okay, that says note the critical region rejection area is corresponding to the value of the test statistic. It causes us to what? Oh, if the test statistic is a critical value, if not if the test is not in the critical value, we fail to reject using this information. Then state the final conclusion. Well, that really didn't help. Wait, wait, wait. We failed to reject. Why did I put reject? Did we, didn't we fail to reject? Not reject, but fail to reject. <laughs> okay, so we want to fail to reject, but there's not sufficient evidence to support the alternative. How about that? Boy. Ta da! Oh, great. Oh, yeah, it is. Oh, it's A. Why? Oh, my gosh. Shoot. What is going on here? Okay, let's see. We got our test statistic is minus 1.82. Yes? So if I use green, the area under green. Did we do that right? Wait, 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 wait. I got a critical value of 1.28. Right? That's my critical value. Well, I don't have to do anything more because this is my Z test, yes? But my critical value is at minus. So my critical value minus 1.28. Right, so what has the biggest area? Alpha. Oh, this is alpha here. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. Alpha is, I don't need alpha. <laughs> Forget alpha, I got a critical value. You got negative 1.28 from alpha. Well, we calculated here. Yeah. yeah, the alpha came in at that point. But now I'm just looking at this, and I'm looking at this as falling to the left or right of the critical value. Is this falling to the left of the critical value? Yeah. This is our test statistic, yeah? Yes, is the test statistic is to the left, which is reject. reject. Not fail to reject, it's reject. Yes. So we fail to reject because we're over here. Right? The test statistic is hitting to the left of the critical value. It's the reject. It's the reject. Right. The A. A was the correct answer. So we reject the null. And there is, uh, if we reject the null, then there is sufficient evidence to support the alternative. It drives me nuts. Um, I don't know what it is. is. Does my brain not work around too much pot? I don't, can't figure it out. Why is it so hard to figure out what is bigger than bigger? I mean, as soon as I had that, I was done. Right? Because here's a test statistic and here's a Z. This is further to the left. I don't know why I'm messing with the alpha and stuff, but it's, see, my test statistic is, should have been from here over. That should have been my p-value, right? So my p-value here is smaller than my alpha. I don't know what, what it is I can't see, but anyway. I think if I keep doing these, I'll get them right. Let's do that one more time. Okay, let's try it again. So here, look, minus 2.84. It's a, it's a tail, one tail to the left. 
It has the significance. All right, give us alpha. Right, and find and find the critical values. Okay, so it's a, okay. So here we go. So let's start with this one. The critical values for for z. Uh, so let's do it here again. Okay, so we already got a z statistic way down here at minus 2.85. This is my z test. That's not the same as my critical value. My critical value, I have to put the whole 0 0.05 in the tail to the left. And that will give me my critical value. Uh, notice that I haven't even, I'm not even looking for my alpha, my p-value yet. I don't, I don't need to. So now I have to find this value, the critical value. And I'm pretty sure it's on the right side. Right, I'm saying because I think it's bigger because two, minus 2.85 is way down to the left. So, but if I want to know what this critical value is and I'm filling up this way, 0 0.05, then I'm be here. Oops. Okay, now I have to look for uh, in here to point. Uh, let me look at, uh, I'm in the guts, right? 0 0.05. No, that's my test statistic. My significance level is, oh, is that, why am I doing 10? Yeah, so that's why I'm looking at 0.05 in the guts, so that I can find my critical value. So here's a 0 0.05, and here's a 0.495. You see that this was in the middle? That's 0 0.05, that's okay. So if I go down like this, and let's see what it says. It says use minus 1.645. Minus 1.645, minus 1, minus 1, uh, minus 1, <laughs> minus 1 point, uh, did I get the point? Uh, 6, 4, 5, is that right? Yes. Uh, how many decimal places? Okay, so now I'm going to go five. Okay, that looks like a number I like. Okay, all right, so, yeah. Okay, now, look at this. This guy is what? Minus 1.65. Where is the test statistic hitting? Yeah, but is, I'm asking, is that accept or reject? reject. It's reject. Do not, do not reject <laughs> yeah, so are, are, I'm, I'm in the do not reject the null. This is, I mean, this is reject the null. Okay, look. Anytime, everything, this is always, I call it accept the null. But you're supposed to say fail to reject instead of accept. Okay? Okay, so, all right, so, so what I'm saying is that the test statistic is hitting left of the critical value. So it's in the reject. For purposes of thinking about it, I would say this is accept a null and reject a null. But that's not how you're going to select it. So anyway, you are certainly have rejected the null, yes? Because we're over here. Okay. So we're going to uh, reject a null. So, and there should be sufficient evidence to show that this is the case. That, so we should reject the null, and there is sufficient evidence to support 0.63. Yeah, because it's to the left. And this better work. Ta-da! <laughs> Got it. No, if you don't work on it, even myself, I haven't looked at a problem in a long time like that, but I mean, it's been a while. So. This is really good practice for the final. Of course, we haven't even got to the two sample yet or anything else, or test statistic. But we have time now, at least a little bit, so that I, you know, I had to make a decision whether we want to go on and learn more new material, or, <laughs> or, 